<laughs> G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. This week we're in Cooktown. That's right, this is the last leg of our Cape York adventure. Go and get yourself a cold drink, get your feet up, we think you're going to love it. in Cooktown. Um, you have to excuse the, the wind because it is absolutely howling here, but apparently it's been howling here for a few hundred years because old um, Captain Cook and a few of his mates wandered up here to have a look at the predicament they were in, and he said it was bloody windy then. <laughs> Still bloody windy now. <laughs> it's nice and cool. It is. I'll tell you what, you get, you get an absolute beautiful view, don't you? You can see everywhere from up here. Yes. Look back down over the town, there's a lighthouse here just behind us. Um, that was the last lighthouse to operate here in Cooktown. Yes. Um, and then you get a view back over up towards the Cape. So if we come around this way, that way, the tip's up there somewhere, probably another six or seven hundred kilometres up there. And then out over here, you'll see a big green patch, and that's where the race course is, and that's where the donation camp is where we're staying at the moment. Yes. So yeah, we've got a, a reasonably good day here in Cooktown. It's very windy, um, and it looks like it's going to rain at any second, but bring it on. We haven't seen rain in a while, and the caravan needs a good wash, so... Might help take a bit of the dust off. It could do, yep. Anyway, we're going to continue our little uh, trip around Cooktown and see what there is to see. It's going to be good. <laughs> There's not a lot to see, but... It's... We'll probably get blown off the hill first. <laughs> so we will. All right, let's get back down. <laughs> Here in um, Cooktown, there's a number of different accommodation options that you can stay in caravan parks. Yeah, there's about three, I think. Yep, um, on the outskirts of town, not in town, but a little bit further out, let's say 30, 40 kilometers out, there's a little bit of um, uh, national park camping. And then at the racetrack, and that's where we're staying, it's a donation camp. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. There's um, no facilities down here, so you need to have all your own water and that. You need to, you need to contain your water, in fact. There's mm -hmm. no tent camping down here either. You can stay a maximum of um, 72 hours, um, and the ranger does come around and check, apparently. We haven't seen him yet, but we've heard quite a few people talk about the ranger visits when he comes. They do supply some bins, yes. so you can get rid of your rubbish, and located at the bin point is the donation bucket. There's no set um, donation that you have to give, but We'll certainly throw a few bucks there because we've used their facility since we've been here. It's been quite nice, pleasant to stay, hasn't it? It has been quite nice. The rumour that we've heard, though, is that this is closing down next year because the caravan parks have complained that not enough people are going to the van parks, which were incidentally almost full when we got here. <laughs> um, not enough people are going to the van parks, they're coming here. But we've only seen maybe a maximum of 10 vans here overnight, haven't we? We haven't seen a lot, no. No. Um, I don't think it's got a lot, a lot of room. It, there's a fair bit of shade, so... Yeah. You know, power could be a, a concern for some people, but Certainly. it's a good overnighter and uh, stop off to see the area, that's for sure. There is, and there's a dump point that's close by. There's also an access point for some fresh water, but just mm. not here at the racetrack. No, but nothing in town is very far. <laughs> no, it's not. Mm. Alrighty. This is our um, second day in Cooktown. Yes. Um, we've got a couple of things planned today. We're going to go and check out a suspension bridge. Yes. That looks, it proves to be all should should be pretty interesting. We get out there and have a look at that because it's a foot type suspension bridge, so that'll be interesting. Um, then we're going to go out along the Battle Camp Road towards the old Laura ruins um, and check them out. And why are we going that way? 
uh, because we missed the turn off coming into Laura, but we already told you that before. So we're going to go out there and look at it because we figure we've been talking about the Cape and maybe a future visit. And for us at the moment, it's, you know, three or four years. It'll be a little while. Yeah, there's a lot of Australia to see and we can't keep rushing back to the Cape. So we're going to see as much as we can see now, um, just to make sure that we've covered off most of the things that we wanted to see in the first place. Yep. Then we're going to come back into Cooktown. We'll give you a bit of a look around town. We're going to finish the day at the Botanic Gardens here, which apparently are pretty good. Excellent. All right, well, let's go and get on with the day. Go and find a suspension bridge somewhere. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. All right, first destination for today is suspension bridge, and it doesn't come without its normal warning when you come near any water in North Queensland. <laughs> Aktung Crocodile. All right, here it is. Let's go check it out, Elf. Alright, every time we find a water body up north, I'm always on the hunt for a crocodile. We got really lucky yesterday and you would have seen that footage by now. But I'm hoping to get one out here this morning. I'll bet you. If you fell into the bloody water, you'd find one real quick. Oh, this is really cool, isn't it? No, that's a big stick. Yeah, there'd definitely be one down there somewhere. Alison's trying to get some photos for our Insta page a little bit later on today, but I think I put her off, and even the wind makes the bridge sway, doesn't it? Oh, alright, that doesn't worry me too much, but every so often my foot goes between it, I was like, oh. <laughs> And it's the one time I think I might actually drop my camera, my phone. <laughs> How does it feel, Stephen? Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I wouldn't like falling in, but I do. I do like the bridge, and it's a beautiful place. It's absolutely stunning if you through the river. He's on the look. No. He's on the lookout. Yeah. Everything that bloody moves on that water, I think, is a crocodile. Everything. Oh, they're fantastic to see, aren't they? That one we saw yesterday, that was just like everyone's just stood there in awe of it. Mm. It's nice to see animals in their native habitat. A little bit of our drive along the Battle Camp Road. So to get to the Battle Camp Road, you just come north out of Cooktown, just follow the signs to Laura. Um, it's about 30, 40 k's of bitumen out. Yeah, I think so. It was quite more than we anticipated. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. um, and then you come onto this. Now we know that this has been reasonably freshly graded because um, we spoke to the girl at Hartnett the other day and, and so far this has been a, a great road that we've come onto here. Yes. Um, nice water crossing back at what we think is Isabella Falls. We're going to stop and look at that on the way back. Yes. But right now we're just going to head out to the homestead and have a check it out. Our third river crossing this is the Laura River we're crossing now and we camped along this a little bit further along a couple of nights ago. We did.
Well, we made it out to the Laura Homestead. It's pretty good, isn't it? It is very good. Um, it's very well intact and there's a few buildings around here and I'll just cut a few in while we're talking but there's uh, Aboriginal quarters here which was for the Aboriginal station hands. Yes. Um, looks like it was um, probably about three separate rooms inside of that. There's an old blacksmith working area and there's also their meat storage locker um, and, and of course the main homestead itself. Hmm. There's a little bit of history that they have here, they've got it all written underneath, you can go and have a bit of a read about that and some old photos of the area. Yeah. But it's a really well intact ruin isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's interesting to come and see. It certainly was. It was about 100 k's out of Cooktown when we came up along the battlefield or the battle camp road this morning. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that was just a great drive up. So it was quite picturesque and a few river crossings to do. It was really nice, wasn't it? Yeah, and the road had just been graded, so it was a good tact this time. It always makes it nice. And surprisingly, there was a little bit of bitumen. <laughs> there was, yeah, yeah. Just bits of it here and there. Anyway, we'll show you all that a little bit later on. But we'll just have a bit of a look around the homestead and we'll start to move our way back. We saw a place called Emma... Lagoon or Emma something or other Emma on the Lake? Lake. Emma Lake. So we'll pull up and have a look at that because mm. it's uh, once again said there's crocodiles about. So see what we say. <laughs> When we've been up here in North Queensland, particularly around where people live, like just like here at the old um, Laura Homestead, there's a lot of mango trees. They grow them everywhere. They're right through the streets of Cooktown. We saw them further up north. There must be just something that's easy to grow in this region and obviously a plentiful source of food. Very chilly. It was a little bit unexpected though, wasn't it? Because you sort of, you felt like you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no other real water in it, although there is the rivers, I suppose, but yeah. you just come down upon this and it's quite a large amount of water that's down here. Anyway, throw the drain up and give you a bit of a look around. Yes. Coming over this hill, and we found a random cow who's giving me the stare down. Aren't you supposed to be somewhere else? <laughs> I don't think you should be there. Not on the side of a mountain. No. Got yourself confused as a goat. All right, one last stop on the Battle Camp Road as you head back into Cooktown. I think it's called Isabella Falls. Yes, absolutely. It's a it's a small set of waterfalls. It's actually at a at a at a road uh, river crossing as you come down, but it's really worth stopping and having a look because they they're small but they're very picturesque, aren't they? Very picturesque. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. So we got the drain up. Give you a bit of a look at what they look like, but they're only about I don't know maybe ten foot tall, but yeah, not real big, but really pretty to come and see. You'll have to excuse the sound because I've had to take the microphones off because it's raining. Our last day on the Cape, thankfully, it's decided it's only going to rain today. Yes. So that should be good. So, see out in Cooktown at the moment, we'll go for a little bit of walk around town. 
um, show you a couple of things. We might even bail into the car a little bit later on and just give you a bit of a tour through the windshield because this rain doesn't look like it's getting any lighter. But at the moment, we're down around Captain Cook's landing spot. So go and see where he pulled up on shore and um, see what they got off of down here. Yes. All righty. Well, exactly three seconds after we said that, it absolutely poured down. We retreated back to the car. So we're going to try and let the shower pass. But in the meantime, let's go for a bit of a drive around town, eh? I'll have a look and see if it's going to retreat because it looked a little set in before. It's very set in at the moment. <laughs> it, might. it started to rain, so we decided let's take you for a quick driving tour around the main street of Cooktown. There's not too much here, but if you have a look out here to the right, it's the Cooktown Hotel. Um, I had a few beers now when I was assault many, many years ago. Uh, after that, we've got the old Cooktown Railway Station. Just some historic buildings around town. I think it's actually a bit of an art, art gallery now and now. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, there's a nice Anzac Memorial Park there, which um, I think was built in about 2008 or something like that. It's got a couple of, it's got a tank down there and an APC. This is pretty much the main street. So in town, there's obviously there's a doctor and there's um, there's no dental services here from what I understand, but there is a doctor. There's time fitters, there's mechanics, um, there's a few banks. So you, can, you know if you need that sort of stuff. There's also the um, the post office a little bit further down the street. There's a good IGA in town, seems to stock most things, and it's relatively cheap. Yeah, it's pretty reasonably priced. What we find is when we go out into, um, like, away into rural areas with the IGAs and things, if you're willing to just to shop around a little bit and not buy the name brand, you actually save quite a deal of money, can't you? You can. We um, always have a look to see or compare to try and do that, but just coming towards the end of the main street of Cooktown now, and as you can see, it's not real big. There's also, as you come down, you've got um, the parks where, uh, I think there's something down here for Cook, but we'll have a look at that when we come back. And you've got the police station on the other side, and then we come down into a new area that I hadn't seen before, um, which is their marina area. It looks quite nice down here, doesn't it? It is, they're currently um, in a a redevelopment so they're doing it in stages so they're up to the um the marina stage yeah, yeah it's quite nice so i'm not really sure how this all works here i'm going to go down the bottom here i think i think we go down go down around the bottom here and then up so what's this here boat ramp yep so it's boat ramp there good place to launch your crocodile from from there As I mentioned before, I had been here once before when I was in the army, that was about 35 years ago, so things have certainly changed, but they haven't changed that much. It's this part of the town that I wasn't um, very familiar with. We actually stayed or we hooked it up in town here for a few days. We had uh, the battalion set in a position around the town and I think I was living next to the post office for about three or four nights. It was quite good. It was an experience anyway. Fishing, yes. Oh, fishing, yes. It's too bad it's a crappy day because we did drive down here the other day. It was quite sunny. It was really nice. <laughs> it was beautiful. The sun makes a difference, but uh, it's a nice area. That's right. And as we said before, we're not going to complain. You know, we've had. Um, the entire Cape trip we've had beautiful weather. Oh. Today's the first wet day we've had. And a little water park for the kids. Little and big, I'd say. Yeah, well, there's some change rooms, all that sort of stuff down here. So, yeah, there's quite a few facilities. There's barbecues, picnic tables. Exercise machines. And we found out from the lady at the IGA that if you come to Cooktown in September, just expect the wind to blow flat out the entire time of year. September's their windy month. Yes. So that was certainly worth knowing. So we might avoid it next time in September, maybe come in October. Because it's been windy, hasn't it? August might be good too. Yeah, it has been really windy, so. It has been windy. And they said exceptionally windy. Wind, windier longer than they normally get, so. Yes. Yeah. Well, they tell us the same in Weeper. They said the wind yeah. had been blowing there for a long time. <laughs> this is an old munitions store here. So they um, used to keep like explosives and stuff inside of it. And that's Cooktown. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it's all a beautiful place. As we've shown you, there's some great day trips you can do out of here. The Bluefield track down to Cape Trib. Mm -hmm. That was a good day out with lunch in the middle at um, 
the lion's den and then I think we showed you today or yesterday that we um, went for a run out to the Old Aura Homestead and that was well worth a drive out along the Battle Camp Road. Beautiful scenery as you go out. And we even had a walk across the suspension bridge. We did. I yeah. enjoyed the other day. We just wandered through the town and um, they had lots of plaques up just explaining what the buildings were and when they were uh, and little um, plaques on the ground as well. So just about the history and what was there and when things were built. I, I, I enjoy reading all about that. Yeah, it is quite interesting. And once again, Cooktown wasn't exempt. Every uh, town we've been to has had a pub that's burnt down at least three times. Yes. And Cooktown certainly had its share. I think that's just from that era. <laughs> one of the things that you see when you come to Cooktown is a park. It's quite a nice one. I think it's a bit of a memorial park, would you say? I think so. They've made it like a recreational area where everyone can come down and enjoy. And, and they certainly have monuments to cook. Oh. And he's uh, landing here. They've got a couple of monuments to cook here, haven't they? <laughs> one of the biggest monuments I've ever bloody seen. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure, now hit me up in the comments if you know, but I'm pretty sure he only come here to make some repairs to the ship anyway. Yes, he did. Yeah, I think like June to August he was here and and the statue said he didn't he didn't leave anything unattempted. Not yeah. sure what that means. Yeah, not sure. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's well worth walking around and having a look. And the other thing here is the Cooktown Cannon, which was last fired in 1987 on one of the arm exercises that I was actually on. There you go. I don't remember it being fired, so it was obviously an in-town thing <laughs> for the people who were in town. <laughs> Not the grunts out in the field. Not us, no. All right, let's uh, have a look around. This looks interesting. Uh, they've designed a walking track. Uh, apparently, it starts here near the Captain Cook statue. So you're here, and it can be a full day circuit, or you can break it down. Oh, it's divided into eight different sections. So Sounds you, right. you can do it in bits and pieces if you like. So see everything around. It's yeah. good. <laughs> it's a pity we don't have any more time here. Huh? Yeah, we probably could do another day and, and get around and see a lot more because every time we walk, there's something, you know, new we spot to go exactly. and see. Maybe we should research these things a bit better before we come. Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Cooktown's one of the stops on the National Trail. It even comes with its own hitching post because you can do the um, the National Trail on horseback. And they reckon it's uh, quite a challenging thing to do. Sorry, Edmund Beasley Court, Kennedy JP. We landed at... Rockingham Bay, 24th of May, 1848. Oh, on his expedition to Cape York. He's probably speared. <laughs> <In> the... <laughs> Around the garbage bins, they always put old historical um, photos to, I mean, it disguises the bins, but it gives you a look back into history. It sure does, and the thing that I like about it too is I don't like to read a lot of the rubbish that's on some of these plaques, it's just too much for me. But to come and see that, I, I, everything I want to know, I've seen right there. Yes. You know, I can see that people come in, they celebrated on that day, looks like it involved everybody. Yeah, hmm. big day out. Big day out. Well, the rain stopped long enough for us to get the Botanic Gardens out. Yeah? Good. It does, looks really nice. These are really old. I think these were first put in. I did read, I think yesterday, they're maybe 150 to 200 years old. It's about the time when Cooktown was settled. Okay. They actually started the Botanic Garden, so that was uh, quite interesting. So some of the trees here might be quite old. Anyway, we'll get a bit of a look around and see what we see. This tree is located right at the entrance to the Botanic Gardens. It's called a weeping paper bark. I'm not a tree enthusiast, but let me tell you, this is probably the oldest and oldest looking tree I think I've ever seen. Particularly, not, not so much the oldest looking tree I've seen, but definitely the oldest sort of tree I've seen that's a paper bark. It's huge, isn't it? Right. Alright, if you come to do um, visit the Botanic Gardens, there's two parts to it. There's the Nature's Powerhouse, which is a information centre. It's also got a coffee shop in there, there's toilets, and there's some artwork in there, which is very interesting to have a look at. And some good information on some taipans. Yes. Um, and then you've all, of course, you've got the Botanic Gardens. So we're just going to wander down now and have a look through the Botanic Gardens.
Red hot tip for today, don't pick mushrooms. Botanic gardens are quite nice, aren't they? It's very beautiful. I think it's um, it'd be really nice just to come up here in the morning, go for your morning walk through here. I think that'd be nice, wouldn't it? It would be, yes. It's um, a beautiful setting, and you can see they've been here for a long time. It's very well established. And we did read the sign, and it was um, originally done in 1878. So, yeah, it was about 150 years old. So we're up in the Botanic Gardens, and Alison was talking about well, down in Cooktown about the scenic rim walk, and this is a part of it here. So you come up through the Botanic Gardens, I imagine, now. I think so, yeah. You certainly get your map down there at Nature's Powerhouse, which was the coffee shop when you come yeah. in. And uh, you go through this gate and you can see up there. In fact, it's actually marked. So there's Cherry Tree Bay and Finch Bay and up Finch along Bay that track there. Finch Bay is a wide stretch of sand, um, but crocodiles can inhabit the area. We love a croc. Actually, we'll take a drive out to Finch Bay because we can drive out there. Just want to check it out. Yeah, same with Cherry Tree Bay, but that was the warning at the start of the Botanical Gardens is that um, some of the walks do take you into these areas where cro crocodiles inhabit and also there's snakes, so just beware of where you are. <laughs> <laughs> it could be an interesting walk in the Botanic Gardens. <laughs> a very interesting walk in the Botanic Gardens. These stone drainage ditches were really interesting. These were built in the 1880s. Yeah. And they used to keep the water drained off the gardens as it come down through there. So, yeah, a bit of brickwork. I'm, I'm tipping it might have been built by convicts, but Alice is not so sure. Well, I think it's just quite ingenious. The time they were built, and they're still, you know, going today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 150 years later, and it still works as a, as a workable working drain, workable working. Still working as a drain today. It's, still learn a lot from our history. Definitely. So this is part of the drainage and pond system that was built in the 1880s. It's pretty good to see. All right, Alley Cat, Botanic Gardens, what do you think? I've enjoyed it. Um, I like it. They've got a little sign tells you what area you're entering a little bit of information and some fun facts and uh, if it's an area that really tickles your fancy you could spend quite a lot of time or you can just take a nice walk throughout the gardens and, and you know see it all sort of thing so yeah, yeah. I quite like it. <laughs> we're, just, we're just discussing weren't we that if you're a botanist you'd be in your heaven. Oh this. yes and if you and if you really love plants you could really enjoy yourself. You certainly could, but um, yeah, there's some beautiful plants here and there's a lot of history in the garden, which is really interesting to see as you go around it. Yeah, I've enjoyed it, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's good, well worth a walk around. We're on the walking trail and we saw it when we were up in the Botanic Gardens, so we thought we'd take a drive down and have a bit of a look. It's quite pretty now. It is quite pretty, actually. It's, it's got crocodile potential written all over it. But uh, central. Yeah, we're not going near the water to find out, but yeah, just have a look around. It's really nice. <laughs> I think it actually set up at the Botanic Gardens that you do see them down here laying on the beach, didn't it? Yeah, they said uh, beware. Yeah, so we certainly won't get any closer than where we are now. But the sand is really soft, so just walking in it, you fall in a, quite a few centimetres as you go down. So, do. yes, Alison was just exclaiming that you'd probably never get away from one if you had to put the put the pace <laughs> on to get away. But anyway. Well, considering crocodiles can move at, what's it, 32 k's per hour? Something like that. I think that bloke told us the other day, yeah. Yeah, they can move fairly fast when they want to. <laughs> they can. But anyway, it's a beautiful beach to come and have a look at. We just won't walk near the water's edge. All the rocks and stuff over here. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. Well... That's it. That's the end of this week's episode. And it's also the end of our Cape York adventure. We really hope that you enjoyed it just as much as we did. If you missed any of the episodes, I'm going to drop the link into the description below. Come and join us next week because we've got a really special episode when we answer all of your questions about Cape York. So hit us up in the comments section, whatever topic you like. You have yourself a great week and we'll see you next Saturday. Bye-bye. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs>
three, two, 